So welcome everybody. If you're planning on doing the solar tour, we have sign-up sheets, so please do scribble your name down. Uh, we're just waiting on a couple other folks to arrive, and then we will open up with the Mayor's Bold Steps Towards Sustainability Award, and then Rudy Berg with Northwest Eco Building Guild will get us all psyched up to go out and tour some solar homes. I was told that I need to get this end without falling off so I can get with some light, so there you go. So, um, so uh, the Good Earth Home and Garden Show provides many examples of how we can live sustainably, and I'm glad to, to be here and to see all of you here. In fact, I was, I don't know, this is one of those occasions today when I was walking around that I was glad to be crowded. You know, to be walking and seeing so many people who are so engaged and so interested and caring about sustainable products and practices. Today, by attending the solar home tour, you're going to have a chance to see three sites that have put various sustainability principles into practice and can serve as a role model for those of us thinking about how we, too, can bring our homes in line with our values. As I say at the beginning of many of the ads that you may have heard on Cumulus radio stations, the economic and environmental health of our community does depend on decisions we make every day. That includes decisions we make both at home and in our workplace. Last year, we created the Bold Steps Award. This award was designed to recognize role models for sustainable business practices employed by companies in our community. And we, when we had the Sustainable Business Initiative, one of the goals we had was that we would really make a point of recognizing people who are taking really bold steps forward in the direction that we'd like to see people go. And uh, I think you'll be kind of, we thought about you can't ever just say we're giving you the sustainability award because people will say, well, they're good here and not good enough here. And it will be one of those things that we have one of those conversations about do you measure up or don't you. So we thought bold steps, that's the way to handle that one. So here we go. This award was designed to recognize role models for sustainable business practices employed by companies in our community. This means businesses not just looking at today but also about tomorrow and operating with a triple bottom line, taking care of their people, the planet, while turning a profit. This literally redefines what it means to be a successful business, looking at a broader range of measures. Today we're here to recognize, this is so fun, a business that was unanimously selected by the Bold Steps Committee. It is well on its way to becoming a zero waste company. And that is especially impressive given what they process and manufacture a broad range of products. They have 56 employees and have been in business for 20 years. They are Mountain Rose Herbs. And now I want to invite Sean Danil and Julie Bailey. Come right on. Now you get to stand in the light. Sure. <laughs> right here. The co-owners of Mountain Rose Herbs up to the stage, and here they are. Mountain Rose Herbs processes and manufactures herbal products, including bulk organic herbs and spices, essential oils, and herbal teas, with a strict emphasis on sustainable agriculture. And they are present here today, and you just have to walk up and down the aisles, and you could find them right yes, here. Yes, absolutely. Mountain Rose Herbs exemplifies what we mean by embracing the triple bottom line. Let me tell you a few of the policies at Mountain Rose. First, they offered scheduled pay increases, which exceed the cost of living allowance uh, by double or sometimes triple amounts, and this is applicable to all their employees. They purchase 100% recycled paper for everything, including paper towels, bathroom tissue, invoices, internal documents, letterhead, catalog, brochures, so forth. All the products they purchase, including the herbs, spices, and vegetable oils to use in their products, are certified organic. All vegetable oil waste is salvaged and used to create biodiesel. And usable essential oils are instead used for natural pest and vegetable vegetation control products. And all computers purchased have achieved the gold standard of, is that EPEAT? That's EP, EPEAT, yes. <laughs> Which rates computers and monitors based on their environmental attributes. All of these bold steps add up to a very impressive fact. <clears throat> Mountain Rose Herbs produces close to no garbage. In one month, with 56 employees and the production of many lines of products, they only produce about 80 gallons of garbage. This is far less than most households produce in a month. We are proud, and I am proud, to have Mountain Rose Herbs as part of the community. Please join me. I'm going to hand them now this recognition award. There you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, uh, join me in congratulating you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Sure. <clears throat> Um, 
I really want to thank the community we're in and you, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I really want to thank all of our employees because without their commitment um, and their dedication and the actual practice of contributing to all of this, this really wouldn't happen. And this is really um, an honor. It's also recognition and acknowledgement of something we've um, always tried to practice ever since the business began. So, um, you're a model. Thank you very, well, thank very you. much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have just one thing to sure, say. Sure, absolutely. Uh, for a manufacturing company, uh, most manufacturing companies can generate up to maybe 1,000 to 1,500 gallons of waste uh, per month. The fact that we've gotten that down to about 60, that represents just personal waste given to you know, 56 employees. We have a lot of personal waste. But we weren't able to achieve that up until about four months ago, thanks to Corey. Can you please stand up? In the red. Thanks, Corey. He, <laughs> he, he goes through with his hands every ounce of garbage and salvages, <laughs> he really does. recycles, reclaims everything. So it's with but thanks due to Corey. It could be recycled in Mountain Rose or Yep. 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 So thank you. Only because unfortunately there are things that just cannot be recycled. Yeah. And okay. that is our garden. And other than that, it's all recycled. Yep. All right. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks for being a great model. Thank you. thank you for coming out to a little bit of a rainy solar tour, but um, I'd like to introduce Rudy Berg of the Northwest Eco Building Guild. Uh, just a couple quick logistics for the tour. We're asking folks to do sign-up sheets, so if you haven't signed up, please do so. And then after Rudy does a quick presentation, I'll preview our three sites. Uh, we'll kind of get organized and try to be at each location by 3 o'clock and wrap up by 4.30. So that's kind of the timeline. So again, thanks again. If you haven't done so, please do sign your name up, and we'll get started. Thanks, Rudy. Okay. Yes, thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I assume that people know, but that's silly. My name is Janine Parisi. I work for the City of Eugene. I'm the Green Building Analyst in the Planning and Development Division. Thanks, Janine. <laughs> I thought I'd just talk for uh, just for a little bit to try to give you a sense of uh, what these projects represent or what I think their significance is. Um, and uh, since we're talking about both green and solar buildings, there's, they're not, they don't necessarily mean the same thing. Also, maybe from time to time, if I get wrong about the solar parts, uh, Newt Loken, who's a real solar expert, can chime in. Uh, okay, right. Anyway, uh, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, solar first because that's the thing that these three projects have in common. Uh, Two of them have other asp green aspects that are certainly worth noticing. Um, part of what what to notice is green building means whatever you mean it to mean, but it can mean all of these things and some other things. And some of these um, some of these are compatible with. Some items on this list are compatible with others, and, and some of them are not. Uh, you might find, for instance, if you've got a lot of interest in recycled materials, it may be difficult to stay uh, away from toxic materials. So having your priorities clear if you're going to undertake to do something green is important. I think somebody else said if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Um, Solar is not new. Uh, there are lots of examples as old as this or older. Anyway, uh, what the satellite represented was the first, gen first generation of photovoltaic uh, approaches based on silicon uh, crystals. And that's still, I guess, the, the dominant technology that is at work, although some new technologies are coming into, uh, into existence. Here's one, a factory using uh, basically a printing press, uh, printing system on a, a metal substrate has just, uh, I think it's just started production in the Bay Area. And as I understand it, uh, this offers the promise of substantially reducing the price of solar, maybe by as much as two thirds. Um, 
I understand that their entire next year's uh, production is all going to one project in Germany. <coughs> That's the magic ink that they print their PV system with. I can't tell you much more than that. But that and other systems offer a variety of new approaches to photovoltaic systems. These are photovoltaic panels that comprise the, the guardrails of these, uh, of these balconies. And these are photovoltaic panels used as windows. You may have seen a, a somewhat similar arrangement at the, uh, what's the building on the U of O campus? Yeah, Lillis. What Part of what these new systems offer is a substantial, not only cost reduction, but uh, reduction in, 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 in embodied energy. You can see the energy payback for some of these uh, thin film systems is substantially uh, less than for the multicrystalline systems that were the first generation. And uh, Newt's already shown a, a, a number of... Uh, installations here in town, so I'll just kind of whiz through this just to show you the variety of applications that these can be used for. This is a little house that's actually not here in town. It just happens to belong to some friends of mine. This is a zero energy house in Portland. Those are, those are so, uh, solar water heater panels, SOVs, and this again is for an affordable housing project. I think this is a St. Vincent de Paul project. And there's a solar application that we can easily overlook, but it's one that everybody, well, not everyone can do. Unfortunately, there are some uh, CCNRs in some places that actually prohibit people from using clotheslines in a visible sort of way. So again, knowing that there are lots of shades of green, some of which involve either photovoltaics or, or solar water heating, some don't. I'll just run through some of those other possibilities. Here's one. This is a project by uh, 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 Habitats, uh, a design-build organization here in town. Green Roof that does a number of good things. It deals with stormwater runoff, helps delay the kind of flooding that inheres from any uh, impervious surface like a roof uh, and slows that down and uh, keeps uh, minimizes the impact of built construction like this, also preserves the roof itself, and in the summer times makes the building cooler. Plus, it offers habitat for critters uh, where there otherwise wouldn't be some. This is right recycled material. These bookshelves started as uh, bleacher seats in a, in a stadium. Uh, this is a a wastewater heat recovery system that was used in a project that Rainbow Valley Design and Construction built last year. It was one of three that the city supported as part of their, their new green building effort. Uh, here's some folks we know uh, building a clay oven. And uh, if you want to know more about that, Jacona here. Uh, can tell you about that, but it's that's very much green building. And of course, green building needn't stop at the front door. Um, green approaches to landscaping, either to use stormwater or to create pleasant outdoor spaces. So green landscaping is, is as big a part of green building as making sawdust. Uh, part of green building involves green planning, and for us, of course, getting control of our automobiles is, uh, is a significant feature of that. Just want to show one of the toughest issues that I think that we're going to be faced with, and certainly Kitty, I'm sure, is right in the middle of this, has to do with aggregate green building, that is to say green planning. And that's going to be, well, almost everyone can subscribe to some version of green building individually. When we get to actually reshaping our neighborhoods and our cities, it gets a lot tougher. But finally, that's where a lot of the work is going to have to, have to be done. If you look at the results of this study that showed, and I won't define what these terms mean in this context, low density and high density, 
you can see how much greenhouse gas is saved per person or per square meter by going from a low density to a high density community. It's very substantial. Of course, a great part of that is, is transportation, which gets us back to getting uh, our dealing with cars effectively. And this is just a reminder that uh, while we may, uh, again, individually uh, manage to green up our lives, we don't want to overlook the broader context or our responsibilities for green go beyond our own individual lives. Uh, and let me just put in a plug now for an event tomorrow that the Northwest Eco Building Guild is, is uh, offering at 3.30 here. We're going to have a half dozen people who are involved in green building and green planning uh, look at a remodeling project, a very modest house, typical house for Eugene, and we're going to sort of take it from the top and examine it and see what green possibilities we can envision in about an hour, an hour and a half. So for those of you, not many of us actually build houses for ourselves, um, but many of us do some work on our own places. You might want to come in and see what folks who wrestle with these issues all the time, how we would go about uh, addressing a project. So please uh, join us if you can at 3.30. And um, I guess that's it. So Janine, you can organize the tour. Sure. Well, and I also want to put in a plug for the Eco Building Guild because they are a great resource in our community. If you want to know about resources and alternatives, materials, they meet once a month, Tuesdays? Wednesdays. Wednesdays. First Wednesday of the month. At the McNeil Riley House. So if you want to learn about insulation or straw bale construction or you have great speakers, there's a lot of expertise in our community. So I'd encourage you to take advantage of that and uh, come to some of their meetings. Also, just lest I forget, Jacona's got some sign-up sheets if you'd like to be on our email announcement list to find out what those events or other events are, mm -hmm. what, please, uh, please sign up. What time day? 7 o'clock on first Wednesday of the month. Yeah, Kitty? I just wanted to also just to add to this conversation that actually in Eugene we have two, the two largest solar arrays in the state of Oregon. And one of them's on the Pepsi building that's out near sequential there. And the other one is on 2nd off of Seneca, and it's an industrial finishes building. And so if you just want to see, oh, that's where you see that. Yeah. We do have a lot to be proud of in Eugene. We have some of the uh, largest solar arrays, in, but we also have a commitment as a city. Part of my job is to help bring information to the community about green building. This is an example of how we're trying to broaden exposure. Some of the sites you're going to see are have lots of different elements of green building. There's the solar, there's geothermal heating, there's um, FSC certified lumber, there's construction practices. Even if you took one or two of those and tried to incorporate them, I mean, that's how we're going to broaden this, um, the experience and our depth of knowledge in this community as we all striving to live more sustainably. Um, as far as the city of Eugene, I want to also recognize that we're one of a few communities in the nation that are not only made a commitment that all of our new construction as municipal government will be to U.S. green building standards, but also we are operating our current buildings, our current facilities, and striving to have those meet um, U.S. GBC green standards also. So that's a significant accomplishment and commitment at the city. I would point out somebody in the audience who's got a big piece of that, and that is Lynn Eichner-Kelly in the back of the room. So, Yay, Thank you, Lynn, for coming. So in the realm of thank yous, thank you all for braving the weather. It was supposed to be dry, but, you know, what can I do? It's January in Eugene. Um, and I also really want to say thank you to two of the hosts, the Leppolds and the Rayers, for letting us uh, share their hospitality and let us come to their homes. So that's a really great thing for us to be able to do. So here's the logistics. We're hoping to get to, there's three sites. Um, my plan is that we'll all kind of unmask leave and try to get to each site by 3 o'clock, and we're going to try to divide into about three even groups, so I'm going to just ask for your cooperation and try to make this work. Um, Rudy, if you can be group two, I'll be group one, and Jacona's going to be group three. So kind of the way I was thinking about this, if maybe like the first two rows can be group one, next couple of rows will be group two, and then the back rows will be group three, and then 
Um, there's site maps and descriptions of each of the sites in the packets. I have about 15 each, so you'll have to share. I tried not to litter us with paper. And as you get in your group, if you have room in your vehicle for a couple other folks, the, we, we're trying to avoid caravanning. So um, some of these are in residential neighborhoods. It would be hard to park 20 cars on the street. So to the extent that we can kind of work together and carpool, that would be really great. The idea is to spend about 20, 25 minutes at each site and have you back here by 4.30 so you can enjoy the rest of the show. Any questions? From the late afternoon in the early evening Dragonflies that blow dart and dancing Circles in the cool still water Rings grow bigger, nature's teeter-totter in the sun People heading home, trying to settle down In Mapleton Traffic on State Road 36 Needs a sound wave Always washing, waking Goes down, the shadows get longer Nature's teeter-totter in the sun People heading home, trying to settle down. Sight you slow runs through town in Mapleton. Mapleton, sometimes the creeks are rise. Grins at will and it floods the eyes. The spirit can be beat down. With the rain Ooh, Every maple Tony knows Hard time comes The hard time goes Friends and well, Friends and neighbors And nothing works Like a love and labor And the sun In Mapleton Now the day is done And the street lights on The alphabet folks Are gathering tables Good food and music And conversation Talking about a dream And about a loving nation In the sun And the baby's color paper by the big moon rise Draw circles and dragonflies in Mapleton In Mapleton Thank you all very much. I'll be doing a lot of stuff tonight, just coming out of all different kinds of places so you hear something you don't like just hang out some will come along <laughs> there was a time when I felt like no one knew that I felt so all alone what I was going through and friends and family became each of you 
Now I will never be the same. Remember you like as I do. I'll see your faces shine like the sun and hide them in my heart. You know the way the paths of people sometimes change. It's so hard to see that we might pass this way again. But there are memories I will always realize. They will never fade away as long as the light is in your eyes. Sun and hide them in my heart. Every one, and when the rain comes pouring down, I will remember your face is like the sun. For all the shining stars who passed us up in time, for the ones who went before us, the ones we left behind. For all your treasures you have given us a sign that we will never fade away as long as the light is in our eyes. Your face is like the sun. I will remember. Your face is like the sun. The sun. Again. 